Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of minutes, our, our guest presenter is going to be going to be a little bit late, so so we'll start the meeting and then we'll return to a stop. Yeah, I'm going to start the meeting. Put doggy back next. Yeah, you, yeah, you wish you had a... Yeah, I wish I had a... I'm going to get them there. I'm putting them up. I'm putting them in the bag. I'm putting them in the bag. Don't take the towels. There's none in the bag. I can get toilet tissue. Alex was going to go home with some cookies in his pocket. I had none. I got mine. Uh, the sign in sheet. Okay, I'm floating around over there. Okay. I'm going to start the meeting so oh, this way we can get going. Did you sign in yet? Yes, I did. Goes. Number one, let me introduce you to our, our new HRC commissioner who was approved last night. Back to, Al back to Alex with the council. K.J. Sharma. So, this is, this is uh, and, uh, he, he, he has a very good uh, uh, background. He was highly recommended to me by... Your friend then? Rajiv Prasad. He highly recommended me to him and uh, oh, yeah. we, we appointed him last evening. So, uh, K.J. Thank you. So we have one more opening, and I'm going to go through. A couple of other things. The uh, Edna, Nora, John Tibbs, and John Asamba were all reappointed. So you were you were all reappointed at the uh, annual at the annual yes. meeting. So you're going to hear from Anne Marie. She will send you the, the correspondence. You have to sign that. Have it no, notarized and to get it back to her. So those are the uh, two items that, that I wanted to start with. So um, the only thing I want to start, you all should have received a uh, copy of the December 13th minutes so ably prepared by our two junior commissioners. I need a motion to approve the minutes. Motion. Motion. All right. I'm going to call on the police report uh, first. And as I indicated, when our presenter comes in, I'm going to stop the meeting because he can. That's our new deputy mayor. So uh, I'm happy to open the phone to the police report. Uh, last evening at the council meeting, we installed uh, five new police members. So, uh, yes. So, uh, hi. Uh, so if you do not know me. Um, so we did uh, swear in the five new officers. Oh, oh uh, one other thing. We have a new liaison from the council, Alex Garros. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, but yes, we did swear in the five new officers. Um, they come on as well as others that are in the academy right now, currently also being hired but trying to get through the academy. Um, six month process, so when you see some new faces on the road, don't be scared, they're learning. Um, but uh, just a few programs that we have either currently going on or that you guys feel free to join. Um, we do have a senior police academy that we're doing right now, um, 55 and older. Uh, anybody that is 55 and older, you all look very young. I'm not really sure who can join. Who can join. Um, but that is currently going on. We just teach them about what we do on a daily basis when it comes to IA, control, traffic, that kind of stuff. How do you um, sign up for that? Uh, just through the township website. If you go to the Community Relations Bureau, you'll see a list of all of our programs you'll be able to look at and just sign up if you need. Um, if you don't want to do the 55 and older one, we do have another one that we just call Civilian Academy. Um, you can look at uh, that. should be going on in the spring, starting up again. Okay, okay but the other one is starting now? It is currently ongoing. Um, so you can still, I'm not sure if you can apply mid-session um, with that. So keep an eye out for the civilian one that should be coming out in the spring, I believe. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but usually we run two of those a year. So we'll be doing the two 55 and older a year, as well as just civilian 55 and older. That's 55 year old. That is the new one, is it? Yeah, that's because the, one the civilian started. one I uh, attended. Yeah. That's on the website there. 
that's about 10, 12 weeks. Yes. And how about yes. 55 and over? How that's the same that? thing. Same thing. Yeah, but that is run uh, during the uh, middle of the day. Of course, starts, of at, starts at 1 and yeah. at 3. Okay, because the other one's oh. doing it at night. How yeah. many? One day a week? Uh, yes, one day a week. Oh. I believe it's uh, Thursdays. Oh, okay. It's yeah. the same thing? Both are yeah, I meant same, the same thing? Same okay. exact thing. So uh, no need to we're just uh, kind of catering to right. the older generation right. that Retirees. usually are and, asleep. And by what sense. does that do? What is, what is uh, it just teaches you guys about what we do on a daily basis because um, a lot of people don't know. <laughs> it's just uh, teaching them what patrol is like, what a traffic stop is like. That's my favorite part because I'm usually an actor in it. So you guys get to do conduct a traffic stop on us, all control. And uh, you know we give you a little bit of a hard time. It's a little fun. But, um, Yep, teaching you about IA, internal affairs, uh, detective bureau, mm -hmm. traffic, uh, the traffic unit, hey, community relations. Sorry, community relations, just teaching you a little bit about the police department and uh, just us as a whole. This is not auxiliary for this. No, 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 that's that good. Let you go to the police car. Oh, do a ride on. Uh, I, I don't think that we we kind of just stayed in the car. I think. But yeah, uh, it's a control traffic stop. We give you the mock you the, trial. You know, mock the things that oh. you can do and everything. Oh. They brought dogs in from the county. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the class has already started. You said? Uh, yes, this 55 and older one has started, but the oh. civilian yeah. one should yeah. be starting in the spring. Yeah, oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's that one. Sure. Um, for the kids side of it, uh, right now we have something called Canvas Connections going on. It's an art program that we're actually running. One of our officers is very gifted at uh, painting. I'm not. <laughs> so um, that's run through the Youth Academy. I believe that also goes on every Tuesday, I believe it is. Again, anyone interested in signing up, just go to the website uh, under the Community Relations Bureau and they can sign through there. Um, we have the chess program. I don't uh, I believe it was brought up before or not, uh, but it would start, starts March 6th. So anyone interested in playing chess, Officer Dos Reyes, he's very good at playing. Uh, he's beat me multiple times. <laughs> I mean, uh, I play chess too, but I'm not very good, so I can certainly try it. I'm on board. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> I think the library does it too, I think, one, like a one challenge. challenge. Uh, perfect. Yeah, he, uh, he does it every Thursday. It's going to be at the youth center this year, or well, this session. So it's a, it's a great time. Uh, the kids love it. Um, Currently, also, we have the Cooking with Cops program going on. That's every Friday at the high school. The kids, um, it's all signed up for that. Uh, so just keep an eye out for pictures. You know, it looks really good. We'll be at Stage House, I believe, the last session of it. It's a great program going on. And as well as the uh, cadet program. That's also currently going on. I'm the liaison for that. Um, kids that are interested in law enforcement, we put them, well, we give them an idea of what law enforcement is like. Uh, this is specifically for high schoolers. Um, so if you know anyone in the high school that's interested in becoming a cop or want to learn more about becoming a cop, they are brought in. We teach them kind of like the civilian academy, but it's a little bit longer. It's throughout the year. And then we actually use them for over the summer at National Night Out. They come out, they run a table, uh, they talk to the public about it, what they do, what they do with us. They have a nice uniform, you know, it looks good, but uh, it's a great program for uh, So if you know anybody interested. What's up? I'm funny. I wanted to ask you about the, uh, who's running the trade center program? That's uh, Sergeant Habish. I'm also a liaison for that as well. You were Sergeant Habish? Sergeant Habish, yep. Okay. H-A-B-I-E-C-H-E. -E. Anything else? Okay. Um, I, I, I do want to indicate that uh, last evening when we installed the uh, five new officers, the uh, public uh, a safety uh, director made a big push about the community uh, 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 keeping their lights on because there has there have been a rash of murders. As a, a matter of fact, I heard it today on CBS. Uh, he was interviewed by the, a CBS, so we're on the map. So you have to be very careful. Who was that, Mayor? The police director was on the oh, so ABC yeah, yeah. with um, yeah. with. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, yeah, I did see it. Well, that's right. That's right. There was an emphasis for anybody who sees any suspicious activities called the police, which is a very simple number, 732-873-2300. Of course, if it's an emergency, you call 911. Otherwise, you call that number. And also, uh, everybody knows <coughs> that we arrive together program. I presume you have heard about it. 
This is a program that Township has started uh, since October. Yes. Would you like to say a few words of about course. that? So the Arrive Together program, uh, Detective Rios, as well as a uh, social services worker, um, her name is Nicole, I believe it is. Um, very nice, very nice woman, uh, met her a couple times. But uh, what they do is they respond out to all the uh, mental health calls, mental health crisis. Uh, Detective Rios is in plain clothes. He looks like a normal person, but except for the police patch, still has his weapon on him uh, and a badge. So what they do is respond out to these mental health calls, and uh, the social services Nicole, she's the direct person who uh, like she deals with that. So she like uh, walks in, <coughs> she, as well as Detective Rios, who is just there for safety aspect of it. Um, but he is trained. He got some more training in that to assist um, with helping that person right away, instead of waiting for a screener to come out. Um, or us having to, if they're not voluntarily wanting to go to the hospital, then unfortunately we do have to get them into the ambulance to go get help if the screener is not coming out. But so this way, the resources are right there at, as soon as they arrive, and they're going to all these mental health calls, which they are very busy right now. Um, but they're responding out to all these calls for, uh, for the assistance. So it's a great program that's going on. We're actually, I believe, we're the first one in the state, or the county, I know at least in the county, we are the first ones that are yeah. in the county that are uh, that's running this. And what's the name again? Arrive Together program. And by the way, it stands for Alternative Response to Reduce Instance of Violence and Escalation. That's why I bring Dr. K around here. Because yeah, I would like to see if we get them to come over to our community to uh, you know speak at one of our meetings or something. I can, bring that to, uh, I can bring that to Detective okay. Sergeant Leah and uh, okay. see if they be if they're. Is that on the website? Uh, I'll have to talk to the Detective okay. Sergeant. So I don't I don't know if it's on the website. But you can call Right. <laughs> they just don't want to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that you're going. But uh, did you have right. a question? Uh, no, I just wanted to again complain about the speeders. They're coming to me, neighbors, talking about the speeders going up and down Winston Drive, even the yellow buses. Okay. They speed up and down Winston Drive. You've about that before. They, yeah, but they keep knocking on my door. If I'm out there, they're walking. Their dogs, they're still yeah, complaining call, about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the traffic safety, <laughs> the traffic police first. Then, you know. the, uh, the traffic safety bureau, they're the ones in charge of that. Um, if you do contact the police department, um, ask for the uh, sergeant in charge for the detective bureau. That's Sergeant Rakes. I don't oh. know if you want to write that down. Okay. Yeah. Sergeant Rakes. Rakes. R A I C S. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop. Okay. A meeting because we have a presenter and I did no, promise so him. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I did so promise so him so that you know, um, you, just give him a call. He'll, uh, he usually sets up all the um, traffic John, John, enforcement please. speaking things. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I am happy to introduce our new so deputy mm -hmm. mayor, Ed okay. McCosnick, and yeah. all of you should uh, know Ed because. He's been around a long time. He was head of our Board of Education for a while. He's been a while, but he was appointed recently as the Deputy Mayor. And I thought it would be a good idea for him to come to us as, a, as his the main. presenter and to tell us how the HRC can help him in any way. So Ed, the floor is yours. Whatever you want to do. Well, super, I appreciate I, being back, actually. and. Uh, I think when I was first elected, just maybe it's two years ago now, I got a chance to come, so I appreciated that opportunity. And then I actually asked the mayor to provide some things, because I'm deputy mayor, and that means I just get to say the things that he's working on, and the council's supporting writ large, so just as a little bit of a, a spokesperson. But um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for your service, for helping us to and reach and connect with different portions of the community. Um, you know, Franklin is extremely diverse, and with it comes a lot of advantages and challenges. Um, and you know, having all of you here thinking about issues to how we can be uh, more connected and supportive is just, it's just critical. Um, you know, and a lot of good things have come out of the work that everyone's done here. So, so I appreciate that. So I ran through uh, like a sort of a little bit of list, and what I thought I'd do is just like cover a few topics, and then if you all have other things you want us to be aware of. I mean, you've always got Council Member Crosby, um you know, to, to bounce things off of, but we can have a discussion also what might be uh, helpful. But these are some really exciting things that are happening that it's important that all of you know as leaders in the community that you can share with other folks. And some are 
on the horizon, but just around the corner, and some are already in, in place. So you heard about one of them already, um, Officer Russo, with regard to Arrive Together, and, and Dr. Krause, thank you for mentioning that as well. The whole idea is that, you know, when someone's in a mental health crisis, that they're not greeted by uh, police officers doing law enforcement because they're, th that response is not necessarily appropriate, and we've seen really bad things happen um, in situations like that. So this is, you know, trying to meet the moment um, in a way that's that's more appropriate and hopefully de-escalate if there's a chance of any sort of violence and get the person the mental health they need. And that takes special training that I don't know if anyone in this room has, but you know, it takes a, a lot of experience and you know, keeping folks up and, and refreshed on that. And I think it's it's nice that Attorney General Platkin has made that a priority and it's nice that Franklin embraced it um, for our community. And the, I think the force has been um, really positively supportive as well um, in, in understanding that. And it's not that they weren't sensitive before, it's just different. And I think if you're like me, I've had lots of different experiences through my life uh, with folks in mental health crisis, and there's a lot of stigma with that. Folks, when this came up the other last night at the council meeting, um, that folks don't really talk about it. Um, but I think if we just sat for a moment and asked you all to share some time that you've seen someone in crisis, we'd all have a lot of stories. And they'd be pretty emotional, and it's hard. Um, but that's what a community is about, that's what our police is about. But with the mental health as an extra level, we're going to be able to be more supportive and helpful. So we're really hopeful for that program uh, to continue to be successful. Um, and we have a number of uh, sort of cooperative arrangements with the Board of Education. So before I was on council, I was on the Board of Education and I had a small stint being president of the Board of Ed. And one of the things we worked hard to do was bring the Board of Ed, which is paid for with your tax dollars, and the township, which is paid for your tax dollars, closer together, find scales of economy. So like a simple thing, um, there's mechanics that are paid for by the township, but some of the money is paid for by the school <coughs> board that help to maintain the school vehicles. So we don't need to have our own garage and our own mechanics and our own tools and our own heat and you know payroll and all that kind of stuff. So that was one piece. Um, so the next few um, enter in a couple different areas. One, um, which I think is a really awesome program, is a partnership with Zoofall Health Center. Um, they provide medical care regardless of insurance status on a sliding scale. They've been doing it in like a, we'll call it a van, but it's a mobile unit, like an RV, which is set up to be a medical facility. There will be a permanent home on the Hamilton Street campus of the middle school. Um, and if you know about when you go down that windy road, I don't know exactly the name, I usually miss it unless I look for the green sign, and there's a big parking lot, it used to be the high school, and then there's some fields up at the top, and we play some, um, some football there. At the very edge of the property, I don't think construction is, is, is happening just yet, but there's going to be modular units that put together to have exam rooms, dental, as well as vision services. Permanent, separate from the school, but on the school campus, primarily, and, and I mean prioritized for the students and their families, and then as things get more spun up with more staffing and more hours to the community at large. Um, it's not surprising, well, maybe surprising, but I, I say this all the time, people in America die from tooth infections because they don't have medical coverage or dental coverage. And that's really, I think, unacceptable. So this is a great opportunity. Um, and actually, we did a health assessment study uh, through the Environmental Commission that looked across the entire community. It was like a one-year study. And access to medical care, particularly in the fourth and fifth wards, which this is in the, in the fourth ward, is lacking. Um, folks are not getting an opportunity um, likely due to access. So having a place makes a difference. And it's really cool because the, the township is going to pay for the building, the school has got the land already, and then they're going to pay for the ongoing maintenance, electricity, security, and different pieces like that. So it's a real partnership. And then Zoofall comes with grants to provide all the rest. And then they medically bill if there's an opportunity, there's other kinds of state support. Um, so that's a really nice program. And then in addition, um, this is, takes a little bit longer to explain, but if you've been to Consolata, which now is called the Board Administrative Complex, over on Route 27, um, it has its tree line, and in the front, we put a community center in. And if you haven't been there to a zoning board meeting, I think they had a planning board meeting there. It's a really wonderful facility. It's open to anyone in the township. 
um, through our normal rules and through our recreational uh, center. But the school board got that building in a land swap with the township. And they swapped Middlebush School, where um, the board used to be, which is just right around the corner. You can walk there from here. So that happened. The school then sort of renovated the facilities for the board. They do in-service training. They don't have to cancel school because it's a separate off-site location to have trainers and adults. There's the community center, a couple community rooms, and there's two classrooms that are flexible. So we could have workshops and education programs during the day and at night, adults, all that. There's no students, so there's, you know, um, we, you know, you don't have to worry about security issues related. Um, and now the town has the Middlebush School. Pre-K, three and four-year-old programs have been a big priority for the schools, and they're looking to expand them. They're free to everybody, but they're popular, and there's not enough space. So they've been shopping around trying to find space in the town so they could put in a, a pre-K school to expand it because all the schools can't fit it. Well, it turns out that the Middlebush School, with some renovations, would be a great facility. So right now, we're exploring with the schools that the township would invest the funds to renovate that school, make it appropriate for three and four year olds, and put that, as you know, it's centrally located, and then lease that back to the school because they get federal and state grants to pay for the program completely, so it'd be a net neutral for taxpayers um, and great facilities. And they would, the, the students wouldn't need to be all over in all the other schools. We wouldn't need to do additions in all the schools, and we'd stave off some of the growing population. So those are two B of B E projects that are uh, pretty exciting. And then the third one is we're facing almost 40% increase in our health care costs for our municipal employees. Imagine that, right? That's really a lot of money. So we're looking at self-insuring. Um, and we're going to be working with the school board because they started self-insurance when I was on the school board. Um, and they've created a health center that's available for their employees, which they're going to allow township employees to go to. So it's just another way. And so that's going to reduce our increased premiums from 40% to 20%. So there's still going to be an increase. And roughly at my, my day job, my organization, the increase was supposed to be 25%. It's around 12%. It, it's what's happening everywhere. But we had to reduce coverage to get the increase down. Um, so you should know your tax dollars are going to work in ways um, that help stretch dollars farther while still providing high-level services and expanding services, quite frankly. Young kids, three and four-year-olds, it is such an important piece that they get that pre-K education and wealthy communities, people pay for it themselves. Um, I could tell a, a story, maybe it helps. When I was on the Hill, I worked in Washington for a member of Congress. I was, I was a teacher at the time, and I was at a pre-K, they called them like briefing. And then they're in the room and there's a debate whether pre-K is good or bad. Should we do <coughs> universal pre-K or not? And everyone's talking, and I'm my first week on the job, I'm, I'm like, why is this even a question? I had pre-K, I was lucky enough to have pre-K. <coughs> so I just took the microphone, and, hey guys, is it everybody in this room? Stand up if you never had pre-K. Nobody stood. Every and I said, well, that's why you're in the capital of the United States of America, one of the, the strongest, best nation in the world, deciding on the education of our future because you had pre-K. And there are people that didn't have pre-K not in this room. So it's been a priority for the uh, schools, and you know I think the township is meeting that moment by pro providing an opportunity to get the facilities. The schools are unable to borrow the money without voter approval. We can borrow the money without voter approval, but we also know the money is going to be paid back one to one. So it's not actually going to cost the voters anything. So it's a really interesting way to partner. Um, so that's uh, stuff with the schools. A um, couple of other ARP funding. So this is funding from the pandemic response and investment American Rescue Plan. <coughs> so $2 million going into water main replacements. So that's nice because that's not going to be picked up by the rate payers. Um, if you're if you have a well, um, and then two million dollars in sewer projects by the township. Again, another way to save money if you're on a sewer. I happen to have a well and a septic tank, so I don't pay either of those two things. But <coughs> folks that have them, that's a great benefit to keep your rates from from going up. Um, YMCA. A lot of folks are very supportive. We've carved out a portion of the town in the land swap. There was a portion carved out at that uh, a board administrative complex for the Y. So the land, we have a land, we have land available. Um, we need money and investment to make the Y a reality, and there's a lot of support from council, also the schools, and I think folks around this room, and we're going to need to work together on finding solutions there, because it's not cheap, um, but we want to make sure that that's uh, available. 
um, both for swimming, life instruction, just so many great things that the Y does. And the Y's been getting more involved in, frankly, they ran a summer program over at uh, Colonial Park, which was uh, Operation SOAR, or program, I think it was the name of it, and it was very well attended by Franklin Youth um, and successful, and they, they're looking to continue that, but having a home base will be helpful. Where is the lab? Um, so it's out of Route 27 at the Board of State <coughs> Complex. I don't know the address. I think it's like 2973. Oh, okay. I'm making it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, uh, on that campus. On that, on campus, that campus. That beautiful tree yeah, lined campus. So some of it's open space, so it can never be developed um, or it could that, be farmland. Is that your cousin's lane? Is it, is it that lane? No, that's no. 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 Yeah, before, yeah. 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 I'll have to side. Google it. I don't know if yeah. I even brought my phone with me. Where did the head lake? Oh, yeah, did. We'll yeah. find you the address. By Hidden Lakes? Yes. Oh, okay, I know where that is. Yeah. yeah. Before, before, the 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 <laughs> yeah, before the Stewart's. Before the Stewart's Park. park. Yes. That's how I know. Um, on, the, on the right side, if you're headed towards oh. Princeton. Yeah. yeah, on the right side, if you're headed yeah. towards Princeton, and you're headed towards New Brunswick, it's on the Huge field. Now, that main building now, I haven't okay. been up there in a while. You know i got to go. Yeah. But that main building now, what is that? You've turned that into the... It's basically a welcome center for registration. That first building right there. But the rest of it's a community center. So there's a massive multi-purpose room. That's uh, where the board meetings are. Warming kitchen. So uh, you can do weddings, but you have to bring an outside caterer. Yeah, and they can just eat the food. They can't outside. cook it there. Yeah. Two classrooms in the back. And then you go down the hallway. And the small chapel, because it was a religious yeah, facility, so is now a meeting space. Anymore. It's beautiful. Um, all available yeah, uh, to the public. Oh, so, so it's for rental, as people can yeah. rent. Um, and if it's you're not just for our use. Yeah. Um, as a town. There's a, start. The way that town does it is similar to how the schools do it. There's like a cascading scale by how many, what percentage of people are from the town, what kind of recognized organization is. It could be free all the way through to if it's a weekend that they have to open, they may charge a custodial fee because someone has to unlock the door, clean up after you. So, um, but it's available. Um, they used yeah. to have parties there and, and um, uh, we pay at funerals. Yeah, that, yeah. That room. available. Yeah. It is available for that. First, primarily for educational purposes, and then, but it's not used a ton for that, so it's pretty available. I know uh, Charles Onajaka's um, daughter got married there. It was a beautiful wedding. I, mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to go into conflict, but so that, that's cool. And then exciting and, and sort of related to education, the library opened a southern branch over by the Franklin Park School. And we were renting land um, over in, I call it the confectionery of yours. Now it's like the Ocean State Odd Job, uh, mm -hmm. Odd Lot. But I, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't work for them, but I, I like the, the place. That development there. Um, and They've been there for a while, though. The library, but the library moved now. And oh. the, the branch is now over by Franklin Park School. Right. Also, the um, BOE sold that land to the library so that they could have a place to build it, and now they're not paying rent. And they got grants from the state to build the building. So it's really reducing costs and increasing library services. And if you haven't been, it's beautiful. It's a really cute library. It's a smaller than the, than the one right here. Um, you should check it out, movies. And they can transfer things. This one is still open, though, right? Yep, still open. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's nice to expand it. Um, and then the, I guess the last thing I'll mention is um, we're doing a traffic study to look at the BNI zone, we know um, with increased uh, development comes increased traffic, particularly with warehouses, and you know reaching uh, what I would consider, and I don't speak for council on this, uh, sort of a maximum. Um, what that's doing to our communities, how it's changing it, what may um, be able to be done to alleviate that, et cetera. So um, that should come out. I don't know the timing exactly. Sometime this year, but we'll get a report back on that. And then a little bit more on the health impact study. If you live in my ward, so I'm from Ward 1, which is the southern part of Franklin, Kingston, basically up to, I don't even know where the street I end on. Uh, it's going to be Sedan across to um, Claremont-ish. So it's, pretty, it's the biggest ward in the town. You're going to live 10 years longer than if you're from Ward 4 or 5. Mm -hmm. Something like eight yeah. years. That's a big difference. Some of that has to do with income. Some of it has to do with air quality, et cetera. We're going to look more at, at what that is. Access to health care was also flagged as an issue. Why that health center really matters. Than the fourth ward. Than the fourth or fifth ward. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a health disparities. Um, well, they're like committees, so yeah, it's not the ward one's age compared to the, the other ward was, was 
quite a bit of difference. Correct. Older folks in Ward 1. Right. Yeah. Right. Does, yeah. does that? More established. Okay. More established. In Ward 1, where it was Ward 4, um, I was pretty telling. I had a question. If no one else has. Yeah, and so that. Um, yeah, so we're going to look at some solutions. Another thing with that is transportation came up as an issue. So you know, almost six percent of folks who live in the town don't have cars, and we don't have great public transportation options. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a micro. It's not on this paper, but a micro mobility study to look at what can we do. Trenton has something called EV Go, where they have four. <coughs> little electric EVs that are available for like a dollar eighty. You just call them, they come and pick you up and take you wherever you want to go. So it's micro transit. It's available to people who need it and everyone. But it's not like running constantly empty up and down the road. So that's one like interim solution to a more of a, what they call mass transit. So it's like right, micro. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see if that's something that's viable for our town. And then maybe some people drop their car, save on insurance parking and all those kinds of things and you know are able to enjoy New Brunswick and the trains to the city and get around and get the things they need. So um, I'm personally excited about that option because we're finding more and more folks wanting to live in walkable communities rather than car-centric communities. Mm -hmm. And this is a suburban generally community which means it's very car-centric. Um, a couple areas, not so much. Hamilton Street, along the 27 corridor, no sidewalks. We've got challenges. So. Um, it's a lot. I could tell you more, but these are the things I, I just wanted to let you know about. I think it's important to get your feedback on. So I, I, had, a, I had a question. I have questions <coughs> too. Yeah. Um, I don't have any answers. I just <laughs> can say <laughs> those things. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, on, the, on the YMCA now, yeah. I, I, I've heard very, Bill Grip was very hot, heavy about it, the council, but um, how does that relate? Because, and I, and I was going to ask Kimberly the exact same question, is we had spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and everything else on, on, on establishing a youth center. So how does the YMCA tie in with the youth for the community? I mean, it should be sort of seamless. I mean, look, 47 square miles, you could have a lot of amenities. Okay. Um, we don't have one park and say we're done. We have lots of parks. Um, Colonial Park is beautiful from the county. Where's the YMCA supposed to go? So co that, co that consolata, what we call now oh, the board administrative park okay. uh, campus. Which is pretty mm -hmm. far. From it's pretty far. Okay. Um, oh, and, yes. and there is talk too about transportation because we want it to be accessible to everyone yes, in the so town. So this yeah, transportation so conversation is coming in at a good yeah. time. Um, I think from the township's perspective, the land is like sort of our donation. And then I think from the council's perspective, we want to like hustle to help with fundraising and raising awareness, et cetera. But it is going to take private investment um, a, as well to make that a reality. And they can finance some interest rates, obviously, have gone up, so it's getting more more expensive. And these facilities are expensive. Okay. So. I, I, I neglected to recognize our guest again, Michelle Peterson. So, uh, <laughs> Michelle <laughs> happens, happens to be the, uh, happens to be the uh, Republican uh, admissible chairman, but uh, she's been coming to our, our meetings, and I'm, I'm trying to talk her into becoming an HRC commissioner, so I'm not, I'm not friends with that. Good going with her. Yeah, yeah, and, she has our, <laughs> and she has our food. <laughs> Good to know. She brings cookies. <laughs> she, yeah. That's who brought the cookies. I see how it works. Yes, that's yeah, the, that's how you the best way. <laughs> the best way to your heart is your stomach. Like any meeting you go to with a cookie. Um, Everyone yeah. needs to eat. I just wanted to ask you this. I can have is, cookies. I'll die. What is going on with the Kmart? Well, then it's a good question. So they've refiled again. That's on my agenda, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. they've refiled again. Right. Um, no changes to the application. It's coming before the zoning board. And it'll come before the board. Um, before the and board. it needs a variance. Right. It's not. You know, like we don't have here in our township, like Somerville. You know, they had the new apartments there with the um, rooftops. Mm -hmm. and what the, about the report? Too, we don't like have any of those retail. kind of On Hamilton here. Street, though, that's would, there's mixed retail there. People don't want to have um, yeah. anything like that. They think there should be restaurants, yeah. more restaurants where we can go in town yeah. to. Well, you're saying all the things I would say. I mean, this is not a, I can't speak for council on this. I could just mm -hmm. speak as mm -hmm. council member in this case. Um, and I would say with my environmental hat on, too, Mixed use is great, right? If, mm -hmm. um, in my ward, confectionery yours, that whole plaza, if it had apartments above it, 
it would be a great place to live because you could just go downstairs and go to the gym. You can mm-hmm. go downstairs and get Chinese food. If you need a bottle of wine, go to the liquor store. I mean, mm-hmm. the library was there, right? Um, so there is a, um, a desire for that sort of thing. And then the idea, too, is like the parking lot during the day, the business people there, and at night, the apartment people are there when they're back from work. You know, people are working from home, so you got to get the calculation right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think ultimately what's good for the goose is good for the gander, meaning mm-hmm. if we're going to make a change and allow something, we should allow it in all the similar areas. And that's Mr. where what we should have. That's This is my opinion. Yeah. That's how Mr. We Levin, Mr. Levin, he, he did he did own the building, right? Still, yeah. So Levin? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm about to call him. So, and, so. And, I would, and I would concur, like, you know, the demand for retail, I argue with people, is up or down. Like, we still need laundromats, we still need go grocery shopping, and people are going back to brick and mortar stores. But we need restaurants, right? We need our share of what we have, in, in my opinion, in Bridgewater. You go there for the container store. Where's our container store? Right. You know, where's our, we have, you know, stop and shop, give us two. Oh, we've got three. Um, shop right, we've got one. So four grocery stores, that's amazing. Some towns don't have any. You've mm-hmm. got to go outside. Mm-hmm. But some of these other things we certainly could have space for. Um, I think we need to be be sort of careful about that. So, um, you know, it's out of, out of our hands in that the, the independent boards and commissions pick up that work for now. But, um, you know, I like the idea as, you know, we look at the uh, Hamilton Court or having that walkable community with living spaces above it. It works there. It wouldn't necessarily work, like say, down Cedar Grove. Um, maybe in 30 years, we could find a way to make it work there. So I think we need to make sure that that kind of development is appropriate for each of the unique areas of town. Um, and like I said, that it's not as of right in this condition mm-hmm. that they're proposing. They would need variances um, mm-hmm. because the retail area does not allow for housing. How are things going in Hamilton Street? Um, I think that's a question. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a question. <laughs> I'm that already here. He's got it there. He's got Hamilton Street. Street. That's what we yeah. live at in Hamilton Street. Yeah. Yeah. And and I know, but I think Johnny, you have a. You don't know what I have. Equity. You don't know what I have. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> but, but, but here's what. Actually, I'm the council liaison for that Hamilton yeah. Street, but my. I'll just give you some of the. But the here's the thing: I moved to Frank. I lived there for like 20 sure. years. Yeah. So home and home and. Um, I'm telling them. Well, you, you came out, when you come out, you cannot mix and go down to Jefferson and then come down. Yeah. That's the only way you can go. That's the only way you can go. Don't make that too. You, you said that precisely. I know the a lot of people, I thought it last I, I love it. Because you can't it. come out, man. You know, and, you can. Yeah, and what I would say is, you know, as we've developed more long-term challenge, and we need to start thinking about it now, it really becomes an issue, is, you know, some of the buildings have parking, but street parking for the retail piece is not sufficient. No. And that's why I know the, the, the turning situation, because of those businesses, they're parking outside the little white, coming in quick to get a whatever it but is. But at the corner, stop. you cannot see. You can't dangerous. So yeah, absolutely. But always come before us. I'm on the Sony board. Yeah. We really. Uh, yeah. I had a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Kaga, do you know? Do we have like Brunswick has uh, New Brunswick Development Corporation? We do. So yeah. how do we attract these businesses? How do like a container? I know we're not going to get a container store, but how do we out to places like those? It's a challenge. So I mean, role is in some ways helping folks to navigate um, that business ombudsman that was kind of yeah. in that in that. Um, you know, the government. Is like you know some people believe in small government reality. Uh, the government doesn't create independent small business owners. You know, trying to live a dream or grow something. Again, when I was in college, got started and now it's guys and you know Mike's. Uh, you know that that kind of thing. Those come from entrepreneurs. Government zones and says this either create it or don't create it. What's been happening along Hamilton Street have been quietly assembling properties till they can get a, to put a footprint of what's allowable in the area. And that takes a lot of taxes, and that's why some things look like, well, this looks like empty, right, um, Hamilton, that are more empty than when I lived there and when I moved in. Now, because of that, but if you look at the part pick it together, it'll say, like, some name one parcel, some name two, and it's like, well, they're the same names. They're probably a holding company that's set together and then build that multi-story with the bottom. My view, again, is that I think it's really stick true to the retail and that the uh, the builders, etc. They should say, well, there's really no market or appetite for that. Above, they're going to want things below. That's why they're moving there. And then we'll say, oh, we'll make an apartment, or we'll do something else. Um, our future is not going. It's not going to be like a, um, a new uh, Highland Park or Somerville. People go. We drive their park and go to the up. Mm-hmm. The people up are coming down to enjoy the first floors, and so keep on pushing. 
Um, and again, we can't do that. We can't open the business. That would be start open coffee shops and like Franklin Township runs a Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah we can't tell Starbucks go here this model and we think this place is better. Yeah. Um, it's complicated. Um, and I think there are critics of Devco, champions of Devco, yeah, and true. and so um, you know I think we have to be true and uh, make sure our policy. Also, all of us are good salespeople. Like Franklin is a great place to invest. We've got a community. And there's a lot of opportunity. For, it's rare for a restaurant to open and fail. I mean, most of the ones that started have stunned, with a few exceptions. Um, you know, and every so often you need a Chinese pizza place. You need a dry cleaner. And, you know, a uh, pharmacy. Those seem <coughs> to close up from time to time. So that. I have some questions my board. Yeah. And of course, uh, Johnson & Johnson was a big, we had a tough company, very, very involved yeah. with Johnson & Johnson. And redevelopment is tricky too because yeah. whenever you redevelop an area, there are folks that were there that are displaced. You remember? Yeah. That's what I'm Now we're talking about talk. Now we're talking about talk. Go ahead, yeah. John. Go ahead. Okay. Well, there's a couple things that come, this comes from the community. Uh, this comes from the fourth ward. Okay. First, they were telling me that in 1920 census, that the, uh, said that the fourth ward had the highest density of poverty. Under, uh, they were undercounted, number one, and they met all the low-income federal guidelines in terms of yearly salary for each family. They all met federal guidelines as poverty based on federal guidelines. Okay. And they had a massive erection of building of new apartments right in the middle of the fourth ward, which causes what you call uh, you didn't call it the word, but they call it gentrification. Yeah, gentrification. That's what they call it. That's what they call it. I mean, this comes from the community. Yeah. And they're quite upset about that being done. And the people on the uh, environmental, uh, I mean, the redevelopment commission, there was a force behind that to get all that done. But this is ha it's like a quiet storm. Like, and everything has happened during the same period of time right now. Now we had an agency in town which provided jobs for all of the community people that way they could uh, build their careers and move on to other better jobs and so forth now it's gone it to move to another town so you have that what on was top. that what was Scat? that Scat. Scat. Yeah. they yeah. they to move to manville which is the most uh, manville nice town you know mm -hmm. but uh we really need it bad we need it in in something the community people bought it the people built it with blood, sweat, and tears. Matter of fact, we were talking about the PK and daycare centers. The people that built SCAP, they started the first daycare PK centers in this country. And they went around to all different other states and cities and taught them how to start PK and head start programs. Matter of fact, if you look at your history, Mr. Theodore Taylor, which was our director, was promoted to the Washington, D.C as the National Daycare Director of America. And he came out of Somerset, New Jersey. I was his uh, uh, heir apparent. And I'm proud of it. Okay. All right. Uh, most, um, no graduates from college or career job training facility can afford to live in their own hometown. There's nowhere available. There's no apartments available. Nowhere in Franklin, that everybody living one paycheck from homeless. They're one paycheck from homelessness. And because I understand it, about a lot of business in the town, I don't know where they gonna get the money from. They build it right in the middle of a, of a, a poverty stricken neighborhood. So our job now is to have a training center, a work training center in the poverty area to train these people so they can get these jobs and be able to afford some of the businesses that you're bringing into town. I mean, you can't bring a guy a, a, a sandwich shop in the middle of the of a homeless shelter. You know, you, you didn't expect to sell anything. Okay. All right. Secondly, now, there's with all this built building apartments. Do you know that they have shut down the rent leveling board in Franklin Township? There is no more rent leveling board. There was nobody to have any problem with any of the landlords. They don't have nobody to go to. It's like you're using the land, you're using the landlords 
to evict people out and they ain't got nowhere to go. So they got to get out of town. That's another form of gentrification. That's all it is. No, ain't no problem, but that's what you, what's happening. Okay? And on top of that, the Franklin Township Housing Authority, which provided the type of low income housing for the citizens in Franklin Township, we've been here over 100 years before you guys even got here. I got the Briggses and the Hawkins and the, and the uh, Montgomery's, Montgomery's and all these people. They built SCAP. They built, they helped to build a whole town. And the Franklin Township Housing Authority is given to the New Brunswick Housing Authority. Now, excuse me, like, what the hell is the New Brunswick Housing Authority going to do anything for the Franklin residents? Come on, guys. Now, that's how, that, and that's what the Frank, that fourth ward, that fourth and fifth ward, that's the dilemma they're in right now. And without jobs, you know that if there's a policy that they can't come to Franklin Township and get a job. They can't apply for a job. They're, and they're supposed to be known that they can't get a job. And I mean, one time, one year, I squeezed a couple of jobs out for the summer for a couple of kids out of Bob. Of course, they had to squeeze it too, you know what I mean? You know, um, please. And then it happened, they was, after that part of the year, they went off and had to get a job somewhere and they formed the gang and you know what happened with that. And I got little kids, 13 years old, 13 or 14 years old. Robbed the cat, robbed and, robbed and killed the cab driver. Because we don't have the mentoring and the, the job performance support for those young kids coming in, this is our town, man. Yeah, I'm a part of I'm a part of this town here. So let me. I want to ask you a follow up question to that because one thing you said I'm interested in learning more about is that the end of the list or no? That that, that was pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. You know. yeah, so this question comes up. So one thing is we can bring training programs here and have them right in a community, like let's say at people's doorsteps. That's one piece. Or we could have transportation options that allow folks to access other training programs that are available more widely. And that's a problem. I, I heard you say that before. Yeah, so we, that's our biggest problem. We don't have no transportation to get nowhere. Yeah. And we really wish, I know what they think, I know how they think, what they think. If I can get them, I'm trying to get a building down in the, the park, I mean, the Hamlin Street, uh, where, where, where the, uh, Old pump, Township Farms to be at. Oh, yeah. Okay. That'd be perfect for a work training center in there. That way I can train them how to drive forklifts and well, camp. Well, and I guess what I'm saying is let's say there's one available in Edison, but there's a way to get there. Oh, no, 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 no. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't. Uh, The best success yeah. you can have for your own people is to provide your own training within your own home structure. Yeah. And you have the federal government, I think the federal government pays for it. Yeah. You wouldn't have to pay for anything in terms of the township. No, I hear, I the hear federal that, government pays for everything. I guess my question is like if there was a transportation <clears throat> system that allowed folks to have access to educational programs and to I mean, go to work it's, it's, it's and to get health care and to you I know, mean, you're doing all these that different now. things. We're in, you know, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, they're doing that now, but you're not, you're not going to have no success yeah. because Ain't nobody gonna get on no bus and ride out. Council out of Thomas is too far. I'm looking to build the council out of Thomas. I'm gonna do other things. Well, the town is big. I mean, even the town, miles even the Ron, Ron got some things over and over on right on Hamlin Street. So I'm trying to work this oh, with him in terms of getting certain things as close as possible to the middle of the most active poverty stricken area. If the economic challenge area, put oh, it that, that area. Sense. That's what I'm, you know, that's I'm a proponent of. That's hey, all. It's a good point, Johnny. Okay. Uh, can I add one other thing? Yeah. A couple of things, actually. Sure, so, the there was this uh, health study, health ass assessment study, and that's where they came with this data of that eight or eight and a half. I'm on it. I'm on it. That. Correct. I'm so, the, thank you for that. I am a liaison on the uh, advisory board of health. Yes, sir. And they are going to take that assessment results, and they're going to be identifying two, three items that will have the most positive impact in the health of the community, especially the force board and so forth. Yes, sir. So I'm hoping that uh, by the end of the year, 
there will be things that is going to be implemented to close that gap, which goes along with the uh, this additional facility for people to go and have the checkup. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If they don't have insurance, yeah. they can yeah. do that. What's interesting yes, is some of those things were happening before we had the study that said we needed them. So Correct. it was nice to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know what happened, Ed. You know what happened. <laughs> we had uh, her, his his daughter had the whole thing set up. And she was running in. She even got some of the doctors out of, that was in the school, out of down at Rutgers. Yeah. That was a beam and part of the program that was going to get up the house and so forth. Sure. But she promoted now. She's a doctor now. God bless <laughs> Doreen, Doreen. She's, she's, so, she's a doctor now. Yeah. But, but the right. same concept of what you're talking about. Yeah. We have been talking about it before with, yeah. with you know, he'll tell you, with some of us here. So I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm looking right. forward. Matter of fact, I'm on that committee with the Sustainable Garden Committee, which Ed and 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 some of the other people in the community, I got the Hamilton Park, I, I mean, got the uh, Pine Grove School, and and by the way, uh, somebody told me yesterday, I was at a meeting, that me to call Paul Drake, I worked for him in election time, that he wants to become a part of us, become a part of us, because he wants to set up some gardens in Colonial yeah. Park. That's right. Yeah. Yes, that's he was telling that. So yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm having a meeting at about two more months. I'm making about two more weeks, two more months, middle of February, that I'm going to try to get, you know, just to, I'm a part of you. Thank yes, thank you. Sorry, thank you. Sorry, so I thank you. So, <laughs> I thank you. so <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to add to his comments about the arrive, this program started two years ago. And uh, now government has $10 million budget wow. to expand it across the state because it was so successful. They were able to uh, basically prevent uh, arrest uh, and uh, escalation about 2,000 people. Mm. All right, so even in our township uh, starting uh, October, there have been 80 cases that they have used the, the Arrive Together program, mm -hmm. which they have really uh, found very useful. So what is this, this Arrive, the I Arrive think Together the, program. The Arrive Together Together, the way you oh, have yeah, an yeah, officer yeah, yeah, yeah. and a yeah, mental yeah. health specialist, they go together, they assess the situation, yeah, and they yeah, decide yeah, what yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the money is there and it's going to be expanded. Uh, I didn't get a chance to ask my question. Good. Um, um, but uh, one of the things that is tied to the community health needs assessment. So um, you mentioned that the organization that's coming in and that land, what's the timetable for that? And if the first clients will be the school children you mentioned and yeah. their families. So is there an idea of when we're going to roll it out to the community at large? Yeah, it should be within the years. I think by, the, by September, I can double check the timing because it's been a little while and it's really outside of our hands because the professional staff is monitoring it mm -hmm. more. Um, so I, I have to get back to you when it'll be available. And I guess when we say students first, it's, you know, some of our students aren't actually students because they need vaccinations. But they don't have access to a doctor, they can get the vaccination mm -hmm. to actually learn. And so that's kind of what that, that model is. So it's the target the families it. in that area first? Our students and then, and then families. And then as we have more availability, you know, more success in the program, allows for expansion of hours. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, it's highly likely that community members are going to bring in under the model like more revenue because of the way the state insurance and the federal government allow for um, you know, filling the gap between people's insurance or uninsured. So um, pretty much everyone pays something um, that, that they can afford to pay. And obviously, if you have insurance, insurance pays everything. Mm -hmm. And so you need people who have insurance and people who don't have insurance make it cover for that. And so. is the contract with that organization uh, exclusive? So in other words, say you wanted to create, um, have a health care, a health fair once a month or, or once every six months, for example, on those grounds because, you know, people can walk to it on Hamilton Street, yeah. et cetera, for many reasons. Would that mean that you could partner with our two healthcare institutions in the area to also bring services to um, the people say, you yeah. know, maybe Absolutely. somebody would be responsible for uh, COVID vaccines on the spot. Someone else would do eye, eye care on the spot, you know, and then they would do the more primary care things like BPs and A1Cs, etc. It's everything. So, I mean, I would say I can't imagine they would be close to anyone who wanted to come yeah, in, right? Especially right. if they're not charging or they have before. Yeah. Um, well, I just know that yeah. when, I, when I worked at St. Peter's, we, there were certain sites we went to where we had exclusive right mm -hmm. to 
to um, provide health care services yeah. at community events. And so no one else. But there were other places we went to where we were collaborating with, you know, Robert Wood. I, I'm now, I, I work out of market now, but I work up in I, North Jersey. But I, I Kind of mm -hmm. No, that's, those are those are both good questions, and I'll I'll find out like when the opening date is, well, and if it's exclusive. I mean, Zufall was very active in <laughs> securing grants, etc., for it, so my likely they're kind of the primary there. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine they just slam the door on anyone who wanted to come. They will. Yeah. But if it if it's available, yeah. especially if it was a health fair, if it was like a community a health event. fair, but there's a hundred places yeah. we could do that. You don't need a doctor stable yeah. or a dental mm -hmm. screen, like yes, you know, light. Yes, yes. can, can the youth center yeah. provide job skills to these youth? on Hamilton Street. We are we're talking about it in a number of different programs. Yeah, they came up the other day. Skills, you know, I mean, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. That, that, that yeah, but there's something we talked about. You know, let me tell you, before Sorry. you received, he received that money, I had been talking to Ms. Ms. Watson Cohen about the job training facility down in this area and the need for job training. The money came down, and they emphatically called it a youth center, which that means it cut everybody off at the age of 16. So that left mm -hmm. the whole community, which we was hoping for a community center, we was because of the community center, and it took all the community center out. Senior citizens kick them out behind me now. What do you mean, Johnny? I can't go in there. And for people that at risk youth. If you go back to some of the council meetings, you'll hear even Bob himself. We talk about the at-risk youth. But that's not that what that building's for. That counted out. That put all the at-risk youth out and put the community out. It's called a youth center. And it was purposely called a youth center. If we get my drift. Well, watch it. I said no. I told you that. I, I just you have to watch that, John. One last thing. Um, have we thought again about partnering with Raritan Valley Community College when the program was on Hamilton Street? We, we are. It was. Oh, we are. Yeah. Okay. It's happening. Because I was thinking the board, board administrator. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm going to ask. Councilman Rob has. Yeah, he's doing that now. Yeah, we were. He was looking yeah. at other spaces. I think there was an opportunity in one of the open space spaces yeah. that we had. It would need renovation. And since we had those classrooms there are ready to go, I mean, they've got outlets in the ceiling for maker spaces. It's a very flexible environment. They're available. Let's get it in a facility that already exists, see how popular, see how we can expand it, see how we can do with some of the existing facilities. I'm very much about, I kind of push back on creating a new space because being with the schools for so long, we have so many amazing spaces. And if we're not using them at night and we can swap it and someone else could use it, it really is about timing. Some of the programs actually happen during the day and you can't have adults with kids. Mm -hmm. So the consulata board administrative complex makes sense. But adults, that's going to be night. Any of our schools pretty much could be made right. available for that. And that's a good use of taxpayer right. money. So and let's not recreate something. And have. Gary, I meant to say this one thing. You told me that. Gary, I meant to tell you that. They said that. No, you need to hear this. They told me. They told me what you just told me this few months ago. They told me they're now is not going to take that position. They're going to share all of the okay. services Great. that came down Great. and so forth. And I was very happy. I should have said that first. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear from. I don't want to hear from Mayor Kramer anymore about that. I didn't um, say no Mayor Kramer. Okay. Um, what, what other thing? <laughs> I, I lost my train of mind. Oh, with the Board of Education, we have to be very careful because uh, we have, we had asked, and, and you were on the board because you have to watch for insurance purposes. I mean, for example, the. Senior communities had volunteered to do some of their uh, teaching and training after hours, and it was turned down because of insurance. Really? Because the Board of Education yeah. can't oh. open the schools in the evening. So people that aren't on the board, yeah. you, are, you are on the board. Yeah, uh, I so mean, there's, it's, uh, we could do better. I mean, I, I would say, I'm not on the board now, so I could be critical. Yeah. We could do better with some of the volunteer opportunities. I mean, New Jersey's litigious, there's yeah. lots of rules, mm -hmm. there's screenings, there's costs associated with the fingerprinting and background checks, et cetera. Um, we are really blessed to have such a great 55 and older community, adult, active adult community, right. and they're a resource right. that I don't believe we tap into to help our, our young people. Yeah, and so this many group's been ways. advocating for that for yeah. many years. We're talking 10, 12 years. Yeah, there are barriers. We've been talking about that. We could do better. 
That's where Pete Clark lives. That's where I live. But bring the school board folks in to talk about that because you know I think it's a good it's a good I, reminder I too. Do have the new school board president coming next month? Okay, good. Yeah. So, Okay, thank you so I'll much. I'll give her a warning, too. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks for everything you thank do. You. Thank you, sir. Feel free to reach out to any of us. My phone number is on the website. It's available. And um, my day job, I run New Jersey League of Conservation Voters, so I do environmental work. I'm on the board of Sustainable Jersey, it, it which does. did the health impact study, which was pretty cool. So thank that's you fun. so much. Yeah, they're going to give me a copy of that. Yeah, no, 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 I got it. Right. 109 pages. pages. A couple other things because we that's already told me. We already all the way to you guys. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. This, Welcome aboard. This, yes. this is our first uh, a meeting for, for 2024. I have to officially get the approval of the committee for a, a chairman and a and a, a vice chairman. Edna has been my vice chairman, and, and I have, of course have been the chairman. But if the committee as a whole wants to appoint someone else. <laughs> Well, it's up to you, but, but I have to yes, officially get, get, the, get the committee to appoint the chairman and the vice chairman. Well, we'll commend you. Okay. Continue as the so chairman. So and so and the 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 nomination, nomination, nomination process is... I make a motion. So I make a motion. So you are nominated. Yeah, I make a motion. Gary. Okay. You're, right. you're, you're on again. <laughs> okay. The, the, uh, so we got to make a, a motion to approve. All those, are, all those Gary, Gary yeah. as, a, as a chairman. <laughs> I don't know what the bylaw is as far as whether or not vote has to be in secret or whatever, no, no, but no. I guess we can. No, we can just say without all it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. name. All those in favor? Uh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, the last couple of items, uh, you did bring up the Kmart Shopping Center. And I did want to tell the committee, I'm on the zoning board, that is going to come before the zoning board, and we do expect a township to come out and uh, complain about it. When day? When? Well, it hasn't been announced yet. Oh, it did Because I saw oh, yeah. Venus put up a sign that they're moving. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Three story, yeah. yeah okay. Where are they moving? They're, they're moving right, right across, yeah. Okay, right. the last, the well, last thing I have one? is jewelry stores. The jewelry. Right Venus. Oh, the jewelry stores. Last month, uh, Edna proposed a possible HRC project that she called Flags and Other Towns, so I asked her to report again tonight. So. Sure. Before I put together um, something in writing, um, because certainly we have to go to the council for, um, for guidance on this too, um, I did some research. So it, the, the, and there's actually, I want to add a second part to it, but let me address first the, the project is called Hometown Heroes. Um, and that's the, the flags that you see in different mm -hmm. towns that have, mm -hmm. l some have all deceased, some have living and deceased mm -hmm. um, uh, residents who have served um, in the armed forces. So um, there's a, I can send a YouTube video on the program to everybody so you can review it. And the way it works, the organization actually helps you to get the program started. What I haven't found out yet is what kind of cost is involved on the part of the town. But um, if you decide to sign up and do this, they provide a template for you to do all your promotional materials. So there's a template for the flyers, template for cards you can give out. There's a template for a form that you would give, um, you would distribute to families who are interested in having their loved one. Um, what I researched was some towns have a formal ceremony and leave up the inbound brook. The, yeah, they the, they're up for uh, eternity. Mm -hmm. um, in some places, there is a formal ceremony mm -hmm. um, when they go up, and then after a, an agreed amount of time, they come down and they're gifted to the families. So that would be, you know, something we would consider, you know, how we want to. Um, now, each family pays for their... It, each family pays, but I don't know... I. There was an intake form, which I made a copy of, um, but the intake form does never mentions money. It just says, you know, uh, the name of your loved one, the birth date, where your loved one served, which one of the armed forces. The program's been around since 2006, and this particular program designs the, the banner, too. Now, I, I've seen some, out in Pennsylvania, I've seen some really large ones. 
Um, the, I think the ones in Brown Brook are too small. You know, you have to get up really close to see um, the name of the person being honored um, with the banner. So I did send an email to uh, info at hometownhero.com. I haven't heard back from them yet, but I can oh, certainly yes. report at the next meeting, you know, what cost involves, because it sounds to me like there is some cost for the, for the municipality as well as for the family. But I don't know those. Um, no, we have a liaison going? here, so yeah, he, so he can go back to the council. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, once I didn't want to put it in writing until I was sure yeah. that we're definitely interested, That's and right. I didn't have any information last time. Just the idea. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm Linda. Where are we oh yeah, so that's something we would need to talk about. You know, mm -hmm. would, would we want to recommend a place to have them put up? You know, certainly that would be the council's. Um, decision, but yeah, you we know, have to go to the council. yeah. Uh, um, but um, <coughs> certainly, I think we could weigh in and say, "Hey, we would love it if it was, you know, mm -hmm. maybe the Hamilton Street corridor is the place because, you know, it's being built up right. and there's more rest, uh, there's more retail. We believe it'll be go on those ground floors of those apartment buildings that are have gone up. I think about some of the places that everybody goes to on Hamilton Street, like Sophie's. Everybody in this town goes to Sophie's, for example. Mm -hmm. There's some places that are gathering places in town. Right. May Mays used to be that way. I don't think it's so much since the new owners took it over. But um, people will tell me they've lived in this town for many years, and I have not. Um, I've only been here 25 or so years, tell me that um, Hamilton Street was uh, more of a downtown than any other place in Franklin Township. Okay, so um, you'll follow it up for us and then we have to go to the council. Gary, I have a little, I have a suggestion to, to that, agreeing yeah, with that. Go ahead, so very quickly, because we're late. I have, I have another thing to say Okay, to I have a suggestion that I agree with your idea and what you were saying, <coughs> but uh, Rajiv Pasai, right now, is building a park for just such causes. What's the, what's the guy's name that's on named yeah. the park? Marconi. 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 Yeah. So what are they doing? He's he's, a, doing. he's all right. I'm getting to it now, sweetheart. He's building exactly what she's talking about right now. Where you can you can uh, uh, appraise or uh, you can honor a hero. And matter of fact, Marconi is a veteran hero. I mm -hmm. think it is. So they, so you're in tune. They are building a park for just such things that you're talking about, for the flag of the individuals that you want to be a hero in Franklin County. I, I thought that park was um, was going to recognize the contribution of Marconi and our place in history as, you know. And the um, being of that, I'm just suggesting. That's what I feel also. Huh? Yeah, I'm just suggesting okay. that there is a place getting being built for the to honor just what you're talking about, as opposed to some other retail place who did there, you know, mm -hmm. that that there's part being and that I think you should at yeah. least consider well, well, that. Well, certainly or, the council would be providing so us with yeah, the direction. Let's go to the council. Sorry. So, the, typically what we uh, recommend for projects like that, to find a non-profit organization right. who will be responsible for the maintenance and any other costs, because we really don't want them to impose on the taxpayers. Right. Mm -hmm. So like the Zebo, for example, we mm -hmm. have such an arrangement. And there's another project that um, uh, I have been uh, talking to a couple of the members in the council uh, that I will talk hopefully next time uh, if uh, it's a viable project I will bring it up here. But again, our goal is to avoid any cost to the taxpayers, right? So they are nonprofit organizations that they will love to be engaged and they will like to be part of it. So you may, as you are putting things together, mm -hmm. explore to see if you can find a nonprofit organization that is willing to support the ongoing expenses mm -hmm. and the maintenance. Yeah, so I think that will, be, that will be ideal, you know, just say, okay, here <coughs> is the council. This is the street we are recommending. By the way, there is no cost for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would make for the, the success of the project if there's no cost. Yeah. 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 So I I will um, reach okay, out to a, a, one of the council members okay. and okay, and and uh, Bambar. And then I have another I have another thing to bring up. Um, I thought 
it's not necessarily tied, but it is about recognizing contributions and service and your place in our township. And when uh, the night of the um, of, that you were all installed in your uh, respective elected offices, um, that night everybody, after they were sworn in, um, spoke about the diversity of the town. Even the deputy mayor talked about the the diversity of our town and how amazing it was that here we had you know an imam and a rabbi um, and one other religious uh, leader who's name escapes my memory. The Reverend. The Reverend, yes. Yeah. So the, Hindu that, Christ. that Christian, you know, there was Christian, there was Judaism, there was Hinduism, and there, there was uh, Islam represented. So dialing way back now beyond our existing diversity, um, and I don't know if this has been done anywhere. I haven't found anything on the web yet, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know how everywhere you see signs that say, um, settled in, incorporated in, you know, welcome to such and such town, incorporated in. Wouldn't it make sense for us to be trailblazers in this area and put up signs that welcomed people to our town, but recognized who was here even before we were here? You know, um, these are sacred lands that, that belong to another a community of people, specifically native, um, the native population in this area. In New Jersey, of course, the Lenny Lenapes uh, were uh, uh, the dominant group. But why wouldn't we um, consider, and again, this is beyond this meeting, I think we have to have another discussion about it when we have more time, but would we consider, you know, wherever you see a sign that says incorporated in or settled in to also uh, pay homage to the communities that were here before we were here. Does Franklin have a historical society? Yes. I don't think cultural it, I don't arts? Know if it's formal. We have a cultural a cultural arts. Arts. Because there's grants to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the county, I don't know about Somerset County, but Middlesex County offers different grants that you can write and they'll pay for different projects like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Signage projects. Uh, there. So, so, idea, yeah. And the other thing I just going to mention, uh, since I'm in for a short time, does the uh, township, because I've only been in the township for a couple of years, uh, do they name streets after uh, veterans? That's a big yeah, program in some places. Well, very similar to your I don't know of none. Uh, no. But they, uh, they, they, they don't change, do. so they don't yeah. change your address or anything. Mm -hmm. They put it on top. Yes, right. yes. And yeah. they have yeah. the yeah. different yeah. veterans. Yeah. That's been very successful in a lot of towns. Yeah. Yeah. And they work yeah. through the, uh, the American Legion, the VFW. Right, those right. Two they, programs. They, yeah, so it's very that. similar to your program that you're talking about, mm -hmm. yeah, which yeah, I'm yeah. sure they can identify the different you know, yeah, the ways to do it, but to put signs on, they do a formal ceremony. Right. And, yes, and, they, and again, um, yeah. I don't know how it's funded, that's the key, uh, something like that, but it's uh, it's very well received by, obviously, uh, men and women who, you know, uh, yeah, give their life for our country. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Our firefighter, we who died have, in 9-11. We have, it right here, we have some. a beautiful place, you know, that in front of the municipal building. Right. Yeah. A memorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, right, right. Pretty, uh, no, that's a beautiful place. What he's talking sorry, about is the room down at, on 27th Street. Yeah, I street from, uh, I know. McDonald's. Yeah, that's the reason I was at this one. Yeah. That was named after yeah. somebody. Yeah, there's some, some streets yeah. I'm sure they're named after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over yeah, the yeah. years, yeah. things like that. And there is the firefighter who died in 9-11. Right. He, he has a street right. that's after. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, okay. Maybe that's what it is. Town yeah. Yeah. That's I think they, they have the, the uh, okay. 9 Okay. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Our next okay. the meeting is, uh, it's easy to remember this, it's February 28th. This is a leap year, so we have February 29th. We're going to be having the uh, a new head of the Board of Education, and we can uh, ask her questions like we asked the Deputy Mayor, and I thank you. I, yeah, I, did I, we welcome one, one thing. Mayor? Yeah, we did that. Uh, yes. yeah. I, I do want to recognize you went, you went Dr. To the restaurant. Dr. Lashana a little bit. You know, he come he comes to us with uh, pretty good credentials. He, he, he served 25 years in corporate management of a power engineering and manufacturing group mm -hmm. concerning the pollution caused by coal fryer power generation plants. So, oh, he needs so to so be we to you about that, Dr. What's Scott. her name? He, he, he's a pioneer in India uh -huh. to create over 20 technical, uh, technical laws for the better of the environmental issues. So, 
Welcome to our committee. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. We are a good citizen. You know, I need an old car full of you know, Mr. Mr. him. <coughs> Just one suggestion. In, in uh, the committees or the advisory boards that I'm a member of, uh, each one trying to have two, three goals for the year that they can do something that will have positive impact in the community. Right. So it will be great if this group also think about a couple things that you wanted to do that w is impactful to the community. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we've s I've been with this uh, for quite some time. We bring uh, speakers, we learn something, we go and tell others about it. But I think think about a couple of things that we can do and basically say, okay, this is what HRC is going to do, which will have this kind of uh, impact, positive impact on the community. So please think about it, and maybe that will be a couple of... Uh, We're training center. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. I, uh, Chair, just to put on the uh, in the minutes there that, uh, you know, I'm the liaison with the high school with the... Um, equity and inclusion oh, that's and uh, just to put on the right we'll talk more about it next time but they do have a uh, their programs coming up Friday uh, May 3rd from 6 to 8 over at uh, the uh, Franklin Middle School Hamilton schools uh, schools uh, campus there and I think we should have what we should have a table there that night okay okay so we'll talk more about that as a group is that the know, black history thing uh, no this is a the well, we haven't there's another big thing at, in town, the Black okay. History Month. Uh, well, it's coming out February, I believe, 2nd. I believe 2nd or 3rd. The 3rd is at the, uh, at the uh, uh, center here, okay. right? Yeah, the 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 we hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, we should also remember that we had couple, uh, four actually great events in our township this month. Right. We had the MLK. Mm -hmm. We had two uh, Muslim Heritage Fund mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, we also had uh, the uh, Pangol. Pangol. I don't know. Have, do you know what Pangol uh, celebration is? Okay. It is a Tamil celebration to welcome, basically, uh, or, or appreciate the nature, the farmers, and the farm animals. And happens that they takes place on 14th of January. And so I learned a little bit about it this time. Uh, one other good thing when we went to that event, there was one student, high school student, uh, who had translated a book uh, from Tamil language to English. This is the children's storybook. And that was pretty unique for that young uh, student from, from our township. So. Please take advantage of these events in yeah. town. They usually people know. And of course, next month is the Black History Month. Right. I think I highly encourage you to go to events. We need to learn from the history. Right. And those are the ancestors of this, this mm -hmm. uh, town and also our nation. So, and but I think as you, mentioned, as you mentioned also that we should put in our minutes there that it is uh, Muslim Heritage Month. Yeah. You know, you January, know, we are on the Human Relations correct. Committee that we should at least have it on our... Well, we have uh, a million people here. Yeah, so, so put that in our... I think the, we'll right. that so the governor signed a resolution May and declared or designated in January as Muslim Heritage Month. That's right, Month. that's correct. Yeah, so there have been all kinds of activities. Yeah, the schools... And in fact, that. I'll just tell you one thing that... Uh, when we had the MLK uh, event in Double Tree Hotel, yeah, right. and there was a, uh, a coalition or organizer for the Muslim Heritage Fund uh, month, and they asked me, is there any place in town? And I said, let me work out with the uh, Double Tree Hotel. So we brought that business. Okay. They were going to another town. Mm -hmm. We brought the business to our town. And mm -hmm. they were very happy. Is that the the organizers were very happy. So 2,000 people came. Mm -hmm. And so it's going it's to be the the a one one win win situation. No, remind me, uh, Pete, about that. Uh, you have sent me something about your committee. Right, I sent you the report there. That, yeah. uh, that's the uh, and that's one of the things we can talk about as a mission is uh, more co working together with the board of education and the, and the committee yeah. about the different yeah, programs. Comes, they run. When she comes, we'll tell her that. Yeah. Um, I mean, anybody know anyone that wants to work the polls? They're looking for poll workers. Right. So just let me know. And I, I, can, I, can poll, bring, but, but, I can bring some applications but, yeah. in the next time we meet. Okay. Because we need poll workers. That's for November, right? 
It's for June. For June. June. We have another one in June? I need a motion to adjourn. I need a motion to adjourn. I made a motion that we've done adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, have a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.